chapter two, Mishnah one. The Mishnah discusses the law of a well that is located in the public domain. A standard well, which is at least four tefachim wide, four tefachim long, and ten tefachim deep, is a private domain. Therefore, it is biblically forbidden to draw water from a standard well that is in a public domain and put the water down next to the well. This prohibition posed a difficulty to pilgrims traveling to the temple for the pilgrimage festivals, Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot because it meant that they could not draw water for their animals on Shabbat from the wells along the route. To solve this problem, the rabbis allowed pilgrims to use a unique arrangement of minimal makeshift partitions to convert the area around the well into a private domain, so that they may take water from the well on Shabbos. The Mishnah describes these partitions and how they must be set up. We now turn to the words of the Mishnah. We may use the following boards to serve as partitions around wells four double posts that look like eight boards. That is, four double posts that consist of two boards perpendicular to each other, like the corner of a square, thus having the appearance of eight boards. Each of these four double posts must be placed at a different corner of an imaginary square or rectangle drawn around the well. The double posts are viewed as the beginnings of halakhic partitions that extend along the entire sides of the square, converting it into a private domain. Since the well itself is also a private domain, it is now permitted to draw water from the well and put it down within the demarcated square. These are the words of Rabbi Yehuda. But Rabbi Meir says we require eight boards that look like twelve. I, that is, four double posts and four straight ones. As ex explained above, each double post looks like two boards. So the four double posts appear as eight boards. Rabbi Meir also requires four straight boards, making a total of twelve. The double posts are placed at the corners, and the straight boards are placed along the sides of the square between the double posts. The Mishnah defines the measurements of the boards, i.e. each side of the double posts, and each of Rabbi Meir's straight boards. Their height must be at least 10 tefachim, and their width at least 6 tefachim, and their thickness can be any amount. The Mishnah discusses how much space there may be between the double posts, and between them there may be a gap the size of two teams of three oxen each. A single team of three oxen is five amos wide, each ox having a width of one and a half amos. And two such teams are ten amos wide. Thus, ten amos is the maximum gap allowed between double posts. If the gap is any wider, one or more straight boards must be placed between the double posts so that no gap exceeds ten amos. These are the words of Rabbi Meir. But Rabbi Huda says the gap between them may be as wide as two teams of four oxen each. A single team of four oxen is six and two-thirds amos. Parenthetically, four times one and two-thirds amos. And such teams are thirteen and one-third amos wide. According to Rabbi Yehuda, then, a gap of thirteen and one-third amos is permitted between double posts. Only if the gap is wider than thirteen and third amos must straight posts need be erected to narrow it. The Mishnah explains how these two teams of three and four oxen are measured. The width of each team of is measured when the oxen are tied so that there is less space between them and not when they are loose. The combined width of both teams together is measured when one team is entering and one is exiting, which requires slightly more space than two teams moving in the same direction.